Okay. All right. We're good to go. Okay. So first of all, before we kind of dig in and um, start talking through how to run your business like a leader, because when you are at the level that all of you are on this call right now, you're not just doing this as a hobby, right? Like this is what you are pushing for, running for. You have big goals, big dreams, and a lot of you have big organizations that are starting. And so we wanted to just kind of get ahead of everything and just start having this conversation right now. Also, you may not have met my husband yet. This is Mike Walmer. I know some of you that are personal friends of ours obviously know him, um, but Mike has built alongside of me in this industry since we've been married. I built both, I think most of you guys know, both of us were married before divorced and so we're remarried. And when I hit six figures, he was a big, huge part of that. And it was his first experience in this industry. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Some of the stuff that he's going to kind of unpack for you guys tonight um, was why we were, why we hit what we hit. And so if you don't know, obviously I'm the director of sales and field development here at Bravenly, but Mike is also working, um, or I shouldn't say working because you're not technically getting paid, but he is our, yeah, he's, he's volunteering his tribune, right? Like he he is our director of IT in, in one way or the other. Everybody here is helping and working with him from that standpoint. And then he just has a wealth of knowledge to add. He has owned businesses before. And so, um, yeah, I'm just excited that you're going to talk with us and that you guys get to all hear some of Mike's stuff tonight. So, um, all right, let's dig in. I just wanted to introduce him quick because some of you guys didn't know who he was. So we're going to start by talking about the importance of leading people right? So there are two things that every single person wants that is on your team right now. They want to know where you are taking them and how you are treating them. Those two things are the center and pinnacle of every aspect of leading your guys' business. And so as we're starting to talk through so much of this, I want you guys to keep that in the forefront of your minds. And I want you guys to check yourself lots daily all the time when you're having conversations with leaders sometimes there's people on your team that frustrate you i get it right like you have all different types of personalities and all of that but ask yourself in every sort of once you leave a conversation or a relationship with somebody did you make them feel loved adored respected valued we should leave our team and our people so much better than how we found them right and so that's kind of where i wanted just to start this whole thing and then i'm going to pass it over to you and you get to talk for a little bit but thank you honey thank you for the introduction before <laughs> going forward i wanted to say aspen thank you all earlier for your positivity and one of the things about this group i'm so incredibly excited to be speaking to you guys is just your positivity. I think of uh, the sermon series, uh, when I think you guys, as Stephen Furtick did finish out the year about uh, finishing favored. And when I think about you guys, I'm all choked up. He cries. He's a crier if you don't know it already. <laughs> okay, I'll address that. <laughs> when you have seen the things that this industry, this business, what it can do, the impact it can have on lives, on families, how it can heal relationships, heal people mentally in their health and their finances. When you fully grasp the power of what we have, it's hard not to get emotional about it. So when I get emotional, it's because I truly understand what we have our hands on. <clears throat> to that side, all that manliness aside, <laughs> Stephen Furtick's uh, sermon to finish here was about finishing favored. And for all of you guys that are here, Last year was a crazy, crazy year, a lot of stuff going on. It would have been easy to sit around and do nothing or even worse, wallow in the negativity. And the people that are here, you choose to see good, to step forward, to be a part of the light. Uh, the devil, he doesn't want us to see the good because he knows that we're going to multiply it. And I know from seeing all your bonuses out there on the internet, you guys have been multiplying it. I know by the before and afters I'm seeing already that you guys are multiplying. It. And I know from just hearing the stories of how these products are changing lives already that you guys you guys have seen the good, you are stepping up and you are growing and sharing this blessing that we have. So it's just an honor to be amongst you guys and to be able to talk to you. And the other thing I was gonna add is another blessing that we have with this timing of all this turmoil that's going on. You know, a lot of people have been sitting around getting the road of 15. A lot of people have been sitting locked up in their house, um, just dealing with depression, negativity, feeling a disconnect from community. And right now we have that op the 
opportunity for them to help them with all these things. So right now there's people that want more, they want what we have, and we're in the place where we get to give that to them at the very beginning of just starting this company. It's such an incredible opportunity. And so that said, moving on to what we're here for today is uh, launching a company is an interesting thing. I know some of you started out with teams of 20, 40, 100, hundreds. It's a very different thing than starting organically with the team and starting with one person. And so a lot of um, what's been lost is just being able to layer in that leadership, being able to develop people and develop teams. And the core mission of this company, why we started it with the Emery's is really to help and serve others, to help other people win, to help other people get ahead in life. And serving pe people means helping people. And for us, what we need to strive to do is to create a community where every single person is personally getting supported. The truth in this industry is most people won't do anything unless they have somebody personally walking them through the business. The statistics are like two to 5% of the people who join this industry will actually do it unless you hold their hand and walk them through and help them through it. So if you have people who have joined this business, you're going, why haven't they signed anybody? If you're not helping them sign people, that should be the expectation that they're not going to. And so for this, what we really need to work through is just developing um, the systems, the process, the community to make sure that everybody is getting supported. When a new person joins this business, they might not take off for several reasons. It could be because they have that lack of belief, whether they don't believe in themselves that they can do it. They haven't, they don't know all about the company and the heart of why we're doing it. They don't know about how this compensation plan is amazing compared to others. They don't know about the vision we have for the products. And so for us, that's where we can help with that belief. Um, they don't know what to do. They might not know the steps yet. They might need help on what to do and how to move forward in their business. They might be scared of rejection. They might just need that encouragement. Um, another big piece is it could be lacking excitement. And Ashley and I were kind of the yin and the yang. She is amazing at putting forward steps. And I always feel like excitement is the most important piece because somebody who is excited enough they'll figure out the steps themselves. But if you can lay out all the perfect steps, have perfect systems for people and you put it right in front of them, but they're not gonna lift a finger to move themselves forward if they're not excited to do it. So it's just important for us to be pouring that excitement in to the people who join our business. And the other piece is people want to be a part of something bigger. If somebody signs up in this industry and they're not supported and they're sitting at home and they're watching their favorite TV show on the couch, they're like, I'm pretty comfy right now. I'm not letting anybody else down or hurting anybody else if I don't work my business tomorrow. I'll get to it next week. But when people feel connected to a bigger vision, when they know that they're part of a bigger community, they have that sense of commitment to work their business. People are more likely to work it for the bigger picture than they are for themselves. And so just getting them connected into the upline, into the business, into the vision of what this community that we're doing and trying to create will help them go forward in their business. A lot of words. Um, I want to take an example of some real life example of businesses I've seen in the past. And so on one hand, you had um, a person who brought in 20 people a month, pretty solid recruiter. And they were a recruiter and that was their focus. And they'd sign them up and they'd say, there you go. There's a system to go read, go learn how to do this business. Take the other person who was more of a developer, they would sign three people a month. So if you look at how their businesses grew, the person who signed 20 a month had 17 of them never even get activated. The other two really not doing anything. Maybe one of them signed one person. So those three people that stuck with the business grew to be four people and not having very much success or excitement. The person who took the three personally launched each one of their businesses, personally helped each one of those three get new brand partners and then turn around and help them. So at the end of the month, the person who signed three had a team of nine. They signed three people, each of them got three. They now had a team of nine excited people versus the team who signed up 20 and had, had didn't personally walk all those people through getting the success in their business. So that's where it's just really important that we are personally helping people through this business and there's much more power in making sure people are getting um, started and getting off to a good start. Mm -hmm. If they don't, you might as well not even sign them. Like if people aren't getting started and having success, they don't really help you towards your goals either. Right, right. Can you touch on to the whole, this one right there? Mm -hmm. So moving right on to what I was just speaking about. So when a new person joins your business, it is incredibly important to get them started as fast as possible. Nobody is ever more excited than they are when they first sign up for the business. And after they sign up each minute, each day that goes by, that excitement goes down a little bit. They're not, you know, at that thing where they were so excited. They said, yes, they signed up two days turns in three. They're like, oh, I can start my business next week. 
next week. Like, well, I'll start next month. And so it's so important that somebody actually starts a business right away. People who don't start their business right away, many of them never even do, or if they do, it's down the road when they don't have that excitement. So we need to get them started. So they're in activity. But the other thing is we're helping them get those wins. They're getting those first couple of brand partners. They're getting those customers. So now we have somebody who has started right away and now they're excited. Now there's somebody who believes in this business. Now they're going to be more confident to go out and recruit people because they just got started and had a good start. They believe that people who join them are also going to have a good start. So it's such an incredible, um, incredibly important thing to get people started right away and walk them through the business. And another huge important piece of the puzzle is for us, when we started this business, we felt like we maybe knew like three people who would consider, when we started this industry, three people would consider doing network marketing with us. Yep. In reality, we felt like we probably knew 200 people in the world, right? And what we realized when three people joined our business, we could have spent all of our time focusing on trying to recruit the 200 people that we knew, or we could spend our time trying to help the 600 people that those other three people know. Each three of them probably had a pool of like, 200 people. So we could spend our time fishing in the small pond with only 200 fish, or we could spend more time trying to fish in the pond with 600 fish. And so every time somebody joins your business, that is somebody else who's now joining your market. And that is your opportunity to get in front of them. And there's many, many ways to grow this business. You can grow it um, with, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Attraction, oh, attraction marketing, attraction sorry, marketing. or placing ads or random cold messaging people on the internet. But the strongest, the strongest businesses, the strongest foundations are the ones that have the most personal connection. So when you're bringing in people who are connected to people on your team, there's a personal connection. They're just going to naturally be that stronger business. People are going to be more likely to succeed and stick with it. And so it's so incredibly important to be able to um, really help people that join your business, really use <laughs> them as a bridge to get in front of their networks as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So touch on, and then I'll give you a little bit of break. Um, just like the positivity that needs to be had from the upline and how that trickles down into their organization. This is a great topic. So you all think that you joined up for uh, Bravenly to join social networking. Instead, you join social worker -ing. You are now a <laughs> mental health professional. Your entire role <laughs> is to keep people excited and positive about this business, about their lives, about where they're going, not to focus on like we talked about earlier, all the negativity out there. There is way more good than there is negative. And so keeping them focused on the positive. And it's important for us as leaders and as sidelines in this business to not be negative, to bring down the people beneath us. And also we want a healthy, excited community everywhere. We don't want to be bringing down sidelines. Um, it's okay if you have uh, things that you're concerned about or you're down about, Bring that upline, bring it to corporate. That's where we're here to talk through it with you. But it's so incredibly important that you always stay positive with your team. And it's incredibly important that you always operate with integrity because the trust of your team, the belief of your team is such an important thing. And there'll be times where you have decisions like maybe I could keep this brand partner for myself, but there might be a spot where they're better served or aligned. And it's at the end of the day, building a foundation of integrity where people always trust you is the most powerful mm -hmm. thing where they feel safe. And those are the people who are going to stay with you. They're going to believe in what we're doing. They're going to be excited about it and they're going to stick around and be successful. And the other piece of this is excitement. Um, we talked about that earlier. We just need to create that excitement for people. Excited people will find a way. And so for us, we need to continue to uh, try to pour into our teams and help them be excited, help our sidelines. We'd love it if you guys help keep corporate excited. You do a great job of that. <laughs> the more you do it, the more we love it. We're fueled by it. Um, the other thing is we are trying to create a community. All of you guys who are bringing people into this, you want them to be joining a thriving, exciting community. And we will have events. We will have calls. And you want people, when they go to that, to see a bunch of people there. You want them to see a bunch of excitement. You want them, when they're rolling up to this party, be like, man, there's nowhere to park. I got to block, park six blocks away. That's what we're trying to build is a great, big, exciting party. We're trying to build everybody to it. Everybody's coming. And so that is what... We are trying to do for as leaders, sometimes you might feel like I already know the things I don't need to be on that call. But the thing is, you need an excited community for your people to be a part of. So you as leaders need to be there to be a part of creating that excitement. And the other thing is your teams will not do what you what you don't do. If you don't show up to the calls, they're not going to. So it's incredibly important mm -hmm. that we're just creating that excitement. We're being a part of this community. We're personally communicating with our communicating with our teams to be a part of this. Anything else on that? 
No, I think you got it. All right. I'm going to give him a break for talking for like two seconds and then he's going to talk again. And then (laughs) we're going back and forth on a bunch of stuff. So, okay. Let's talk a little bit now about basic layered leadership principles. So this was the, the term layered leadership was a new thing for me when I started building, um, in a company, the one that I hit six figures in. I mean, we're all leaders here. You guys know I was part of it works. Okay. So in, in it works, I really started to hone in on this idea of layered leadership and what that was. And once I got to a level that was like our executive director level, so like 10,000 in group volume, I actually got handed a book that literally changed my life as a leader. It's called layered leadership by Bob Goshen. Okay. Um, I have something for you guys at the very end of this. So just stick with me on that one. But one of the biggest things that that book taught me was the fact that like, you can't be everything for everyone in your entire organization. You guys are going to get so burnt out so fast. You're also going to take away leadership from your downline if you do that. And so that's what we're going to spend the majority of the call, um, the rest of this kind of talking through some of that stuff. But I also learned as part of layering that leadership is people are coming to you, right? If we're telling you guys stuff and negativity, concerns, whatever, that doesn't go downline, that comes upline. You guys as the uplines, as the top level of our company, need to be sponges or I'm sorry, need to be like bubbles. Like you need to be like a bouncy ball and not a sponge. Okay. Because sometimes if you're letting all of this stuff in, it affects your mood. It affects everything that you're doing. It affects just every aspect of it when you're starting to get some of this feedback. And so take it in and let it bounce right off of you. Don't let it like in interfere with your core of who you are. Okay. The other huge aspect of layered leadership is the simple thing of monkey see monkey do, right? Is you do something and what you're doing, your downline is going to follow in those footsteps and do the same exact thing. And so make sure what you guys are putting out there is things that you want duplicated, right? Things that you want out there. So Speaking of that, like, let's talk a little bit about just personal communication, because I know for me, when I've led teams, like I get frustrated if I'm like, oh, you didn't see it in the team page. Like I totally posted that in the team page, or I threw that in our downline chat. Are you kidding me? You didn't see that you guys, there is no accountability when you just tag somebody or put something in a chat, you have to personally communicate with them. So I'm going to let Mike talk about that because he's super passionate about it. (laughs) I am super passionate about it because without personal communication, most things don't happen in this business. You'll see our weekly Zooms where we might have a thousand people in this company, but there's 60 people on it. And that's because personal communication doesn't happen to get people on it. If you put in a chat, hey guys, there's a whatever, a meeting tonight, a Zoom, uh, see you there. Many people aren't going to be on it. One, if you don't reach out to them personally, they don't feel like they personally matter. It matters if they show up. And the other thing is when you have that personal one-on-one conversation with somebody and they commit to being there, they now have a commitment to being there. They have an obligation. If you didn't have a one-on-one conversation with them, you do create no uh, obligation for them to be a part of it. And as leaders, you're letting your people down. Like they are here because they want to grow. They want more. They want to be better. And they want us to have that accountability for them. Mm-hmm. So we are letting them down by not one-on-one reaching out to them. That's what they need. They need that leadership. They need that mentorship. And so it's not enough if there's uh, an amazing post that you think would be uplifting, enlightening, or it's super informational and they need to see it. Don't just tag in the post personally reach out to them to check it out. And here's the thing, guys, it's such a simple concept. We're mostly building with five legs. If every person personally talked to their front five and each one of them talked to their five, every single piece of information that ever needed to be needed to be disseminated would get to every single person. It just takes that commitment to doing it as an organization. And here's the thing, if you're passing it down to somebody in your five, you know they're not um, communicating a downline, then you should probably do that because it's only hurting your business. It's hurting people on your team also that aren't getting the information that they need. So assume that responsibility. And the other thing is Ashley talked about layering leadership. And the truth is not everybody is going to be fully bought in. Not everybody's going to be bought into the leadership. People have different strengths. Some people are just going to be recruiters, but it's important to identify people in the ranks who are going to be the ones who are going to be the developers, who are going to be the communicators. And I would say for everybody, by the time you're hitting executive director, 
Yeah. You should be the one who's stepping up and being responsible for everybody beneath you. Like you should be up to speed in all the things. And as a company, we're all going to grow and learn the thing and get the processes and systems down together. But that's really, um, once you're at that point, you really should know all the things and shouldn't have to have your upline doing all that communicating for you. Yep, absolutely. That is that is what I consider the level of leadership. And I know sometimes we look at VP because it's in that leadership phase, a part of our comp plan. That was just an easy way for us to break up nine ranks. You had three, three, and three, right? But when somebody is doing about 10,000 in volume, they have a big enough organization. They're at least have 24 people on their team where they need to start developing some of these things as well. And you starting to pass the ball and pass the torch out. So your senior directors and above, on this. You're just getting some of this goods now so you can start early with developing some of these habits. So I don't know. I'm curious, how many of you guys have read John Maxwell's five levels of leadership? If you have, throw it in the chat just because I'm curious who I'm talking to. Jacqueline, I see you looking in your books. Um, I know, right? John Maxwell, like everything. So one huge thing I did a book study on, and this was an awesome book, and it was just eye-opening in so many different things, but the book talks through these five different levels of leadership. And as a leader, everybody starts on the first level, okay? So as I'm talking the, through these, I'm curious, I want to know, or I'm sorry, I don't want to know. I'm saying, I want you to ask yourself where you think you fall in. You don't have to throw it in the chat or anything like that. I'm not asking you to do that, but I want you listening and trying to figure out where you're at and what you need to do to get to that next level, right? So the very first level is position. It's literally your right. It's a title, right? You're senior director and above. You have the right to be on this call. You have positional leadership. People follow you because they have to. People follow you because you have a title, right? So the second level is permission. And this is where relationships come in. People follow you because they want to, right? Level three is called production. This one's about results. So this one is about what you're doing. So people follow you because what you've done for the organization, right? Maybe you don't even know this person, but you followed them maybe in your career or something because of what they've done for, for everybody as a whole. Number four is people development. This is about the reproduction. This is about digging in with people. People follow you because of what you've done for them. So you've gone from developing an organization to developing people individually. And then the last fifth level, the highest level of leadership that very few people get to is what they call pinnacle. And this is that respect transformation. This is where people follow you because of who you are and what you represent. Okay, so I want you guys thinking through where you think you are right now, what you need to do, where are things you can dig in. And like we talked about those first two things of how do you make people feel and are you casting that bigger vision of showing them where they're going that could maybe lead to some of those different leveling up your own level of leadership. So a couple of different things that you guys can do to start developing this layered leadership within your organization is lead out loud. You guys have probably heard me say this before. You're working, you're doing stuff, you're leading, you're signing customers. Be loud about that. Show your team what you're doing. Teach your team what you're doing. Throw it in a chat. Why? Because don't you want your downline doing that same thing, right? Don't you want a director that maybe just enrolled somebody to throw in the chat to their downline, how they got that person in, right? That's modeling the way to show people how to lead from the front and lead by example, by leading out loud. Inspire them, you guys, by sharing the bigger vision. Talk to them about where you're going, what your goals are, where this company is going. Some people are not connected to corporate like you guys are. So get off of these Zooms and go share something with them. Be like, oh my gosh, I just got so filled up. X, Y, Z happened. I just love the heart of the integrity of Aspen and Brent, whatever it is. So inspire them by sharing the bigger vision of what we're doing, okay? Challenge yourself. How are you searching for ways to grow, searching for ways to dig in, in your own personal development in areas. And you guys, this is that gut check, that like moment of like uncomfortable part where you're like, where am I lacking? Like ask someone, ask your spouse. We all have blind spots. You guys, they're blind spots. Cause you can't see them. 
Go ask somebody that you trust, that you respect. Where do you think I'm falling short in my level of leadership? They'll tell you. They know. I guarantee they know where it is, right? We all know where each other's blind spots are because it's glaring to everybody else. True friends, true leaders have crucial conversations to better each other, but even great leaders ask the questions, right? So that they can better themselves. So um, let's see, enabling your team, enabling your downline to act get in collaboration with them. You guys, like we're doing these things, take this back, get together with some of your leaders, allow them to teach each other. Maybe what somebody is doing over here on a leg would be beneficial to everybody else. That's sharing the wealth, right? Um, okay. So let's talk through, let's kind of move on and get into just some basic things that you guys can be doing to layer leadership. That's going to impact your paycheck. Okay, so things that you need to learn or do when you're a leader, and I'm talking about the back office. If you can make your back office your BFF, you guys are going to start seeing your checks double and triple if you can utilize the things that we already have in place. Okay, so like Mike kind of already said, at this point, if you guys don't already, take the weekend, click around, click every button, see what it does. You need to just have some sort of basic understanding of the back office so you can answer questions. So your team, when they're coming to you, asking you things, you can advise on placement. You've gotten in there, you figured out, okay, you can dig in and see where somebody's organization is. And when they're telling you, hey, I just enrolled somebody, I think I'm placing them with so-and-so, you're like, ah, actually I was just in there looking today and I think a better spot would be here. This is how you can actually rank up by doing this. So by placing them um, or being able to advise on placement, okay? So a couple of things that I've always done um, and ways that you guys can use the month to maximize your paycheck is the beginning of the month, Look and see who did not rank up last month, who is still an executive brand partner on your team that you can get excited right now on promoting to senior brand partner, okay? Or even executive brand partner by the end of the month. Who hit senior brand partner that can go executive brand partner this month, right? So the beginning of the month, take inventory of who on your team are at certain ranks and get them excited about what it's going to look like to go to that next one. You guys can do this if you go to, I believe it's commissions and drop down to rank qualifications. Um, general qualifications report. That one has an advanced filter button where you can actually filter by rank type. You can filter by join dates. So you can literally see everybody on your team that's maybe a senior brand partner, send them a message. This is where layer leadership comes in. Like Mike said, if you have five legs, if you have four legs, you talk to somebody on your front line and say, hey, did you know that you have five people on your team? Get them excited about hitting that next rank, right? Go to your next leg. Hey, you've got this many people that didn't rank up. Get them excited about going to that next rank. So teach your team what to do. You don't have to be the one that's doing it every, all the little moving pieces, right? So the beginning of the month, check and see who's not active right? Send a personal text message to your personally enrolled and have a game plan of how they're going to get active, right? Have that personal conversation. I would be checking that actually probably weekly throughout the month. If you're talking to somebody at the beginning of the month and you're saying, hey, I was just looking through reports. I just wanted to reach out. Right now you're not active. I want to make sure you get a paycheck this month. You can do that by a couple of ways, placing an order for hundred PQV or getting some customers. What is best for you? If they say customers, that's where you can give them a script, give them a post, give them an idea of how they can go get that 100 PQV. Hey, all you need to do is go sell a trio and you're going to get active right now and have your paycheck for this month, right? That is also something that's going to increase volume. I would be super curious if I, if I were building and I had a back office, I would be pulling a report and seeing how many people weren't active. Why? Because if there's a couple or a lot, and I know 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, right? Like that's volume right there. Go get your people active and the volume is going to raise in your entire organization just by reaching out to people and letting them know that they need to be active. So this is where layered leadership comes in. You do your personally enrolled, then teach them to go do the same thing, right? So then you tell them, hey, 
Why don't you go see who's not active on your team? Communicate with your leaders, have a check-in, have a thing with, you know, your top level leaders and say, okay, guys, who sent their active text today? Like check in on them, teach them. Remember, like when you're teaching layered leadership, they're not going to just know and expect what to do, right? So every week, updating volume, getting those updates from, from your leaders, text your top level leaders and ask them, hey, will you send me your chart with names and numbers? Okay, so that you can update where you're at and you know exactly what's happening and what's going on. So that way you can coach better. You can be a better mentor when people are coming to you strategically wanting to rank up to director. You've already got an idea of where they're at with names and numbers for their chart because they're on yours, right? Then the very last week of the month, I would be looking to see where people are at from a PBV perspective. This is the only time you guys are going to care about BV, okay? BV is what you get paid on. QV is what you qualify on. So when you're looking at your team, you care about the QV, except when it comes to this, enhanced commissions, okay? Enhanced commissions are how you get paid on a higher commission, the 6%, 9%, 12%, and 15%. So why does that matter for your team? Well, if you have somebody on your team that's at 300 PBV, I would be reaching out to them and letting them know, hey, you're 100 away from unlocking 6% more. Guess what? They're going to run through a brick wall because they probably don't know that, and they're going to go get that 100 BV. Guess what happens to your organization volume? It goes up, right? I used to literally rank in thousands of dollars in volume the last couple of days by doing this in the last company that I was in because we had a similar part of our comp plan. And I just always took it upon myself to do this. And I would reach out to 30, 40, 50 people on my team that were close and none of them ever knew where they were. None of them. They were like, oh my God, I had no idea. Right. And so having an idea of who's close to 400, 700, 1200 and 2000 PBV. Those are the four different levels of how they can impact their check. And the other thing you guys is you are being a good leader by teaching them how to go raise their paycheck, right? Like everybody is so excited to hear from you. The fact that you care enough about them to help them go get more money. They, they literally, they just love you for that. Right. And obviously you're doing it because you care about them, but also knowing that your volume is going to raise by helping them increase their paycheck. It is huge. What happens with loyalty when you guys start digging in and helping other people raise their paycheck. So I kind of actually want to turn it back over to Mike. I want him to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that you did for like our team and our organization when you were building with me and just know you guys, if you don't have a spouse that's doing this with you, th like these are things that I would need to do if Mike didn't already enjoy doing them. This is part of leadership, right? So if you don't have a spouse, don't feel like, okay, well, I'm cut off from this. No, these are things that you can be doing um, for your downline as well. Yeah. And I feel like you touched on a lot of it. So every month, just to start the month, I was filling out the charts and knowing where everybody's volume was at. And so I would reach out to them when the new month started to letting them know where they finished. If there's somebody who promoted, I was reaching out super excited for their promotion, but also letting them know where everybody on their team was at for their next promotions, where they were at this month, what they could push for and how close they were. And every single month, people, even if they're in momentum and had grown and hit promotions, they still didn't have that belief. Like you think I could do that this month. And of course they could. Everybody's always close to promotion in this business, no matter how far you feel, it just takes a lot of little wins adding up. And so you're always super close. So just reaching out at the beginning of the month, letting people know where they finished, where their team finished, reaching out to their team or communicating with them to see if they were going to reach out to the team to let their team know where they're at. Sometimes there are people who are disappointed about how they finish the month. What I love about this business is every single month is a new month to start over. Every new week is a chance to do the things you didn't do last week that you meant to every day as a chance to start new. And so getting those people who fired up who maybe felt down, it's okay that that past is the past. It doesn't matter, but here's what's in front of you. Here's what you already have. Here's the beautiful things we can grow and do with what you have. And here's what it takes to move forward. And then going through, <clears throat> going throughout the month, um, just every single morning, getting into the back office and looking for things to celebrate with the team, looking to see if new people had signed up as brand partners in the business. If somebody had signed a brand partner, reaching out to them, congratulating them, reaching up to their upline saying, hey, did you see and so-and-so 
sign this person. That's awesome. Congrats and being excited. And the thing that does, it lets them people know that they matter, that they you care about them, that you're watching, that you know what's going on with them. It lets them be more excited. It lets them have that belief that they're going places and just finding those little wins to celebrate with as many people as possible every single day. Oh, yeah. Another thing is if a new person came in, I would also and reach out to the uplines, but I also try and find the new person on Facebook and reach out to them just to connect with them, just welcome them to the business. That was another thing I do. Uh, maybe many of you already know this, maybe some of you don't. In Facebook, on computers, you can create friend lists. So I create friend lists in there to be intentional. I have an LFC friend list. I have the other leaders friend list. And so that's my way of being intentional and trying to make sure I'm able to follow your guys' lives that I can reach out and comment and like, but just being intentional about um, connecting with people, following their business and just, be, just being a part of their journey. Yeah. yeah. I think the other thing that you did, and this is a little different because we don't have a lot of events going on right now, mm -hmm. but you always were the driving force of making sure if there was an event, um, you know, letting everybody know like, Hey guys, like, are we going to see you at the event this week on Thursday? Are you getting on the call? Like, and just letting them know, because again, it's that personal communication just because it was on the team page doesn't mean they saw it. Yeah, absolutely. One of the weekly things that we would definitely do is talk about and reach out personally about all the weekly things they should know about, whether there's an opportunity event, whether there was a training and then talking to them about, are they going to personally reach out? Who are they not going to reach out to? Because I'll do it for them. Just having that personal communication with people to drive, um, people to these events to make them big, to make them excited, to get people in front of the information. And one of the things I always say about this, guys, I can't promise any one event, any one meeting, any one thing is going to change your life. But I promise you, if you consistently get in front of this business and all the things that are associated with it, your life will be transformed. You are going to grow from the experience. You're going to grow from the stories. You're going to grow from all the successes you hear about it. You're going to grow as a leader. You're going to grow in your knowledge. It's going to be transformational. So it's just so important that you're continually getting in front of everything, but getting as many of your people there as you can. And that all goes back to personally communicating to make sure that happens. Yep. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about being the leader. So I personally think that every single one of you guys should, if you don't already should have at least a personally enrolled downline chat, not a downline chat with your entire organizations. Those can get crazy out of hand, right? But a personally enrolled downline chat, a place for you to push information to your personally enrolled and then tell them to go do the same thing, right? And some of your personally enrolled, they may not have anybody, but some of them have big teams, right? So if you're communicating with your personally enrolled and pushing it to them, they're going to push that down. Another thing that I always used to do is I would introduce my new people to my upline. I wanted them a part of the bigger picture and I wanted them to feel like they were a part of something. They knew where they were going, that they were connected to the big person at the very top of the chain, right? That it wasn't just me. I'm not special. They're special too, right? So I wanted to introduce them to my upline any chance I could. So you guys, same thing for you. I know Nikki, Jacqueline, your director corporate, introduce them to me in Aspen, right? Like they'll feel special that, that they're here, but make sure that you guys are introducing your people all the way up to Nikki, to Jacqueline, to those people that are on your team, to the vice presidents, to Lisa, to executive directors, make them feel a part of something. Um, uh, let me see. I don't want to actually talk about that. Uh, okay. Same thing or not same thing. Sorry. I get scatterbrained. You guys, I have ADD if you don't know. So at least when I'm on zooms and giving info. So one huge thing with being the leader is not stopping at your personally enrolled. There are so many people down in the depths of your organization. And if you wait and hold back thinking that maybe that person is going to be dug into from a leader in between you, you guys are missing a huge boat. I would not be sitting here with you right now if Aspen didn't do that with me. I would have fizzled out so fast because the girl who brought me in quit two weeks later, the girl who brought her in didn't know what she was doing. And then the other girl didn't know what she was doing and quit like a month later. I would have fizzled out, not known what I was doing, but Aspen got on the phone with me because she looked at her back office and saw that there was a new person that joined her team, reached out, had a phone conversation with me, and I just ran with her. And so like Mike said about the fishing in the pond thing, you guys, I don't know how many times that my 
personally enrolled weren't necessarily always the runners and the leaders on my team. It was because I dug in and dug in and dug in and found somebody that raised their hand and were like, please coach me, please teach me everything. And if you don't do that, you're missing the boat. Now, what I'm I'm not saying take away every bit of leadership from your team, let them do that, but do not rely on your downline to do what you need to do as a leader and make those people under there. It's your organization too, right? It's your organization. They have just as much right to you as the person that you enrolled that got them in. So just remember that you guys don't stop at your person enrolled, dig in. Next thing, is recognize the right behavior. We kind of just talked about how to maximize people's paychecks a little bit, giving huge amounts of shout outs and recognition for 400 club, 700 club. You're going to see corporate doing that. I put a post up in Bravenly Nation yesterday. Don't stop there. Make an image. When you're shouting out your person, put it in the comments, post about it on their social. It is a big freaking deal that they just went and got 400, 700, 1,000, whatever it is, make that something on your team where you're creating FOMO, where everybody else is like, dang it, Tammy just shouted out Aaron for 1,200 club. Like, I want that shout out, right? So create that feeling in your organization. You guys, we can never shout out the same thing twice. If, if somebody's hit... 400 club, guess what? The next shout out that they get is 700 club or a rank advancement or being, you know, boxed in for a rank. You can never shout out the same thing twice. And so as the individual, you're always searching and pushing for that next thing that you can be recognized for. And so find ways to recognize right behavior, find ways to spotlight people, do shout outs in your downline chats. It doesn't always have to be on social. When you recognize the right behavior, tell somebody, shout them out in front of every Everybody. Another huge thing that rewards the right behavior and also develops leaders is when somebody is telling you that they're doing something and they're working and you're like, wow, that's like, that's a good tip. Like I just learned something or that's awesome. Be like, you should totally go make a post on Brave Inly Nation about that or go live. I'll tell Ashley, you're going to go live and she'll, she'll admit you, right? One, it's going to push them so far out of their comfort zone. But the other thing that it does is everybody else in the entire company is going to be like, holy cow, that's a great idea. That's awesome. Do you know what that does for their confidence? Do you know what that does for their downline when they're, they're seeing their leader being shouted out and all of these other people are like, wow, that's a really good idea. They have instant like whoa about their own upline. What it does on so many levels is going to grow leaders in your organization. And so anytime that you guys are hearing stuff, say, hey, go share that. Go share that in Brave Inly Nation. Go share that in our group chat because other people are going to want to hear that, right? Create these stories. So let me talk a little bit too, um, and then we're going to kind of closing with just getting people launched, but taking away leadership and development and growth from your downline. I've watched this happen. I've probably done it unintentionally, right? And, um, and it's just something that we need to be aware of, right? We want to empower our leaders. We want to make sure that... Um, when you're passing that torch to them, that you give them the opportunity to go put it in their downline chat. If you as a leader are in multiple chats and you're the one that's reminding them or pushing it into everything, you are taking away the leadership from your own downline leader. Okay. And I'm just going to use an example. This doesn't happen, hasn't happened. I'm not in this chat. I just know the line of lineage goes Nikki, Tammy, Aaron, Melissa. Okay. Those are four leaders, insane, great, awesome leaders that are all in this call. It, I'm sure that Nikki and Tammy are probably in some downline chats of Aaron and Melissa, right? So how this would go is Melissa share, or I'm sorry, Nikki is sharing with her personally enrolled. She's letting Tammy share it with hers, Aaron sharing it with hers and Melissa sharing it with hers. If Nikki were to go in and share it in Tammy's, share it in Aaron's and share it in Melissa's, She's just taken away leadership from Melissa, from Aaron, from Tammy, right? And so that's what I'm talking about, about taking that torch and empowering your leaders to be able to give them the opportunity to do that. Now, are there times when Melissa's like, hey, I'm at work, Aaron or Tammy, could you go in my chat and remind people of this? 
Absolutely. But give your leaders the opportunity to lead their teams. Okay. One more thing I'm going to talk about is teaching people how to fish as leaders. You guys are going to get so burnt out so fast. If you are answering everybody's questions about every little thing, there's a very different and fine line between a brand new person that's just coming on or somebody that's asking a question like, Hey, so could you tell me like what, how much do we make on our ambassadors? And you're like, okay, that's in the comp plan. That's in the unit section. That's in an album or whatever. So teaching people how to fish, they can eat for a day when you, or I'm sorry, giving somebody a fish, they can eat for a day. If you teach them how to fish, they can eat for an entire lifetime. Right. And so one phrase that I want you guys to just like master and coin is that is a great question. Why don't you actually go ask that on Bravenly Nation? And if it doesn't get answered in a little bit, tag me. But I'm sure there's other people that are curious about what that answer is. And you're just going to be the sounding board of, of that information. What that does is it creates a powerful resource for our team page, right? We all want that. We want this page to be something that is living and breathing. The other thing that it does is other people are able to learn from their question. And the other thing, the most important thing that it does is it teaches your person to know what to do, to find resources for themselves, because you're not always going to be available at all times of the day, right? There's no such thing as a bravely emergency. You do not need to be at people's beck and calls. And so by teaching people where to go find the information, they're going to start doing that for themselves. Okay. So let's close it with just getting people launched. And then I want to show them something. All right. So as we talked about earlier, it is super important. It is imperative to have a healthy business to get people started right, right from the beginning. We talked about how launching a company it is difficult to do this right when you start with hundreds of people on your team. So going forward, what you want to have happen is when somebody new joins your business, you want to help them get launched right away. If you see somebody, I'll say for anybody in your downline that joins your business, your first question you should be asking is, is there somebody above them that's helping them get launched and get it started right away? If you're not sure, you should be reaching out to the uplines to see if there is anybody. If there's not, that should be your per you doing that. So. When a new person joins, get them launched right away. Help them schedule an event, help them invite to it. Because when new people join, we get so excited and we wanna say so much and we'll just blah, blah, blah and say too much. We get super excited and we say all the wrong things. So you wanna help that new person invite people to get in front of this business so they don't scare everybody away right from the bat. And then the other piece is, uh, so you're gonna help people that have- I mean, Sorry, I can't see I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get something ready. Okay, go for it. All right. So you schedule the event, you help them invite to it, you help people, help them close people, you help them find customers, and you rinse and repeat. And those are like the most basic important things. Just when somebody gets in, get them scheduled to start, help them know how to talk to people about how, getting in front of the business and helping them close and then repeating for the people that join them. Yeah, no, it's you. And I think sometimes too, you guys right now with the whole event stuff, like obviously like I built belly to belly. That's how I grew my business. I launched everybody in person. A launch doesn't always necessarily have to be an event. Like Mike said earlier to me, he's like, launch could be getting five people added to the insiders page, launching their business that week. They just need to launch their business. They, you need to make sure that they're talking to people right away, that you're stepping them through those simple things of, Hey, first goal for you, go sign two, two customers and get one ambassador. Why? They're going to promote senior brand partner, right? Just have them get that done the first week. So your first goal is to go sign two customers and one ambassador. Do you have anybody that you think would support you as a customer? Who's one person that you would want to do this business with, right? I can't wait for, for you to promote this month or this week. Like how awesome is that? And so just making sure that they're focused on like the small, tiny, little mm -hmm. itty bitty steps. Yeah. Help them get in right away. Help them get started right, right away. Help them win right away. And that's the culture you create in your organization. And it's such a simple thing to do, but it just takes that intentionality to make sure you get people started right away and winning right away. Okay. So I know this was super long. I'm just going to show you guys something. Um, so today I was kind of having just like an epiphany from a standpoint of, I use the notes app and I'm actually going to show you it real quick. So you can just see what it looks like. So you understand what I'm talking about here. 
Um, I'm a Mac user. I am, don't even try to hide it. <laughs> My husband is not. Okay, let me pull this over, sorry. Why is it not letting me drive? Ah! Hold on. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, hold on. Give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec. New brand partner, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna have to close this. Screen share, there we go. Okay, so I use this notes app. You can create folders in here. This is like my best friend. This is my like how I get lots of work done really, really fast. I created a folder called new, well, this needs to get changed to brand partner, excuse me, but I will not building anymore. So all of these are different things for a new brand partner, okay? Um, I have a checklist in here. I have a getting started text after they enroll. I have all of these things in here. And I was telling Mike that I'm like, oh my gosh, I just wish I could set up everybody's phones for them so they could easily like copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So we're going to do that. We're going to schedule a Zoom where anybody can come work with me, where I can help them kind of set up some notes and I'll put the actual script or whatever in, um, in the chat. But what I created today is a resource that anybody can use that is how to sponsor like a leader. So if you have sponsored a brand new person, this is something that you can use. Um, it's just all of, all of the things in, okay, it's going to do it again. There we go. Yay. All of the things in one place. Now, if that were me, I would not be using this. I would be using a digital script, things like that. But if you have a new person, one of the things I've also realized is people are nervous and scared to bring somebody on board and to bring them on because they don't know what to do with them, right? And so you can use this PDF, you can use this as a training, you can go through it with people, but it is just some of my scripts that I've used in a PDF for you guys to be able to easily use. So yay, you enrolled a brand partner, let's get started. These are the four things that you need to know ASAP, get them launched, help them invite to it, help them identify people and get a post up, okay? So this is the script that I have that I send to somebody as soon as they enroll. This is the literal, like I have it in a text message replacement. This is what gets sent to them. Yay, you're in, couple of quick things, username, password, log in. You guys can kind of read the screen. So this is what I send them after they enroll. And I'm telling them, hey, in a little bit, I'm gonna send you some getting started steps and then we'll schedule a call to go over some questions, okay? So I'm telling them what they can expect. Now, this is what I've always considered my getting started text. This does not get texted to people at once. It sometimes get text, gets texted to them over a course of a day, but this is that first thing where it's just like, hey, okay, so let's get you going. I'm super excited for you. I'd love to know what was it made, what was it that made you say yes to this? Like, what are you hoping to put this money towards? They tell me. And then I'm like, okay, the best way to schedule or to get your business off is to schedule a launch event. Let's get that up. What works for you? In-person um, in person Facebook. They're like, hey, let's do Facebook. Perfect. Next, send them this. Hey, let's make a list of 30 people. When you're done with that, take a picture and send it to me. This takes some time, right? Now you've got them making their list of people. You've also got them taking a screenshot and sending it to you. So you're not texting them things that are gonna overwhelm them until they're ready. Once they have a list of a few people and they text it back to you, you're like, okay, perfect. Your first goal is this. I'm gonna add you to our Facebook page where you're gonna see some resources but let me help you with some scripts, right? And so this part is just what you're walking them through of getting started. Here's a few different posts that you can send them when, when you're done. Um, all right, so this page, you guys, this is the newbie checklist. These are the 10 things that your new brand partner should be walking through to get started, okay? If you guys can't see this, don't worry, I'm gonna send it to you. This is as their sponsor, a checklist for yourself to just make sure you're doing all the things, right? Like, have you welcomed them? Have you sent them the getting started text? It's just a place for you to kind of keep yourself in check of, of what to do. How to have some conversations, maybe what to say when you introduce them to an upline, how to talk to them about active status. Like if they enrolled with the 299 kit, this is what you can send. They enrolled with the 49 
here's what this can send. Social media, like this is how you guys can be posting that you've just enrolled somebody new, right? You just enrolled Ashley, woohoo, congrats, right? You wanna make a post about it because your network is gonna see that your team is growing and it kills two birds with one stone. Your network is seeing that your team is growing and it's welcoming this new person and getting it out there. So this is the end. I still need to do a couple of things, but I just wanted to give you guys at least a snapshot of what this looks like. Um, so any questions, I'm going to stop the recording and um, if there's